Uh, the third course is, uh, is something I've been writing in Nashville for decades. And in Nashville, you walk into a writer's room and uh, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, of course, you don't really start writing until 10.15 because the rule in Nashville is that from 10 to 10.15, you have to bitch about the music business. And after you finish bitching about the music business, then you say, hey, you got any ideas? And uh, uh, almost every time. Uh, you pull out your little hook book, or these days you open your laptop uh, and uh, and look at uh, look at a series of titles that you've been you know you're walking through the world and somebody says something you say oh, okay that uh, and so you uh, you start writing from a title uh, the title contains so much and because you write from a title you just normally expect that by two or three o'clock in the afternoon you're going to be pressing stop on your uh, work tape and the song will be done. Uh, you write a song a day there, sometimes two, uh, simply because the title, starting from a title, is such an efficient place to start. First of all, it gives you DNA. Uh, you, you, ha you have a title like, um, uh, I don't know, some of, the, some of the great ones like Hotel California. I mean, already, you know, the thing just reeks of possibilities uh, because it's California as a hotel. What does that mean? What is the qualities of hotel? What does California have? You know, and so on. So you have all of that stuff. You have uh, uh, the rhythm of the title. And the rhythm of the title is, uh, uh, there's a couple of weeks in the uh, writing from a title course that uh, just has, has you using the rhythm of the title as a motif to build a section. And then once you've got a section built, say a chorus, once you've got that built rhythmically, you know that everything belongs there because it's working off of the motif. Just like a classical composer, ba da da da, ba da da da. You know, once, once you have your, your motif done, there's a very real sense in which the symphony's finished. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, details like, you know, orchestration and, you know, sections and all of that. But, uh, but a classical composer has this whole sense of, uh, of, of what it is to develop a motif. Techniques for motivic development. Ah, here's one, repetition. Okay, ba da da da. Okay, now we'll repeat it, but we'll repeat it with different notes, same rhythm. Ba da da da. Okay, so there we are. Uh, now let's see, uh, repeat, but repeat faster. Ba da da da. So there we go, faster. And at, at some point there's going to be a secondary motif coming in. And guess where that's going to be? That's going to be the primary motif of the second movement, etc. Uh, and so taking that whole concept of motivic development and applying it to a title. And uh, let's say your title is, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Losing your love again. Oh, great! That's you know, go ahead, keep that one. Uh, losing your love again. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. That's the motif. And so now you start ba da 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 ba da. Ba da 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 ba da. Ba da 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 ba da da. So you use a piece of it. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 ba da. Ba da da da. Ba da 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 da, ba da 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 da, ba da 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 da, building a little tension. And you say, okay, well that sucked, but uh, you know, you, then you, you you try again and you try again until you get something that really feels right. And once you have that, then you say, all right, now I need to build a contrasting section. What would a contrasting section be? What have I got? Ba da 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 da. How's it really? Losing your love again. Losing your love again, ba -da -dee -da -da -da. whatever. So what have I got? I've got that motif. What would it be like to just take a piece of that motif, ba da da da, ba da da da, and using that as a piece of the verse, it's going to it's going to carry a seed of oh I'm home when you get there. But it's not going to be that. So there's a whole thing about uh, using using the uh, uh, rhythm of the title as a uh, as a stepping point to uh, to developing section. Um, and then uh, 
uh, using the sounds lu la ge, lu la ge. Those are the three stressed vowel sounds there. Take those to your rhyming dictionary and do some bra some uh, uh, some brainstorming there. And there's a whole section in the uh, writing from a title course on the use of the rhyming dictionary and the thesaurus is brainstorming devices. You know, and I would like to say that I came up with those concepts. But of course it's false. Because there are some decent writers out there who already use those concepts. Uh, the whole thing about uh, using your rhyming dictionary as a brainstorming tool. Uh, a, you know, sort of amateur writer by the name of Stephen Sondheim, who just does that all the time, you know, uh, Sweeney Todd, uh, Barefoot in the Park, all that stuff. He always goes to his rhyming dictionary before he writes and uses it as a, uh, uh, as a way of getting the sonic lay of the land. Um, so if you're writing Broadway, I suppose that's all right. Oh wait, here's another guy, Eminem, uh, who does the same thing. Uh, the his, his, uh, his rhyme columns are his search engines for ideas. Uh, so, that, uh, so, so all the way from Sondheim to Eminem, and Peter Gabriel and Sting and you know, all those people, they all do that. Uh, and so I recommend it highly uh, uh, that instead of just using, you should have a rhyming dictionary by the way. Uh, uh, that's one of the things that Tools and Strategies also deals with. But uh, uh, this, this whole notion of, uh, of having a line, uh, baby I hurt so bad, okay now what do I have to rhyme with bad, all right. Uh, it didn't make me sad. Oh, great, you know, inspired. Uh, go to the rhyming dictionary, find out what else is there. Go to your rhyme types, find out what else is there. Um, but uh, instead of just writing a line and needing a rhyme, you start before you write the lines and you have your rhymes set up. It's a, it's a really interesting uh, tool to use.